Fate, with its travelling companion's bad luck and misery, arrived at Thomas Blackstone's door on the chilly, mist-laden morning of St. William's Day, 1346. Simon Chandler, reeve of Lord Marsden Manor and self-appointed messenger, bore his master's freeman no ill-will, a warning to the young stonemason of the writ issued for his brother's arrest would stand him in good stead with his lordship and make the reeve appear less grasping than he was. A chance for the boy to run rather than hang, and hang he surely would for the rape and murder of Sarah, the daughter of Malcolm Flaxley from the neighbouring village. Thomas! Chandler called, tying his horse to the hitching post. Where's that dumb bastard brother of yours? Thomas! The house was one room deep, twenty-odd feet long, its cob walls made of clay and straw mixed with animal dung, the steep-pitched roof thatched with local reed, now aged and smothered in moss. Smoke seeped through an opening in the roof. Chandler stooped low beneath the eave to bang on the iron-hinged door, a figure emerged from the mist at the side of the cottage. "'You're about early, Master Chandler,' said the young man, cradling an armful of chopped wood. He looked warily at Lord Marlden's overseer. There was no good reason for the man to be there. It could only mean trouble. Thomas Blackstone stood a shade over six feet, and apprenticed in the stone quarry since the age of seven, had the build of a grown man who used his body tirelessly doing hard labour. His dark hair framed an open face with no meanness of spirit reflecting from his brown eyes. Lean like the rest of him, it was weathered to a colour that almost matched his leather jerkin. It gave him the look of a man older than his sixteen years. "'I'm here to warn you. There's a warrant of arrest for your brother. The sheriff's men are on their way. You don't have much time.' Blackstone peered into the rising mist. Another hour in the morning sun would burn it away. He listened for the sound of hoofbeats. The horseman would come down the rutted track. Its flint would ring from the impact of iron-shod hooves. It was quiet except for a morning cockerel. The cottage lay beyond the edge of the village. If he had the desire to run, he could have his brother into the forest and over the hills without being seen. What charge? Rape and murder of Sarah Flaxley. Blackstone felt his stomach lurch. His face betrayed nothing. He's done nothing wrong. There's no need for us to run. Thank you for your warning, said Blackstone laying down the cut firewood next to the front door. "'Christ, Thomas, I know his lordship would not want any harm to befall your brother. You're his keeper, and his lordship has always looked kindly on you both since your father's death. But you will be held equally responsible. You will hang with him.' 